her first ever gold medal in the women's singles discipline for Japan. And this time, they convert, my goodness me, what a match. They have guaranteed themselves a medal at these championships. A very solid performance from Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota in this women's doubles semi-final. Before this, we succeeded to win three bronze medals two years ago. Back then, it was seen to be the best performance Japan had displayed. This year, however, we managed four medals, which included gold and silver. So I guess this year's result is the best ever. At the recent BWF World Championships in Scotland, Japan produced its finest showing in the history of the Premier Tournament. Nozomi Okuhara's incredible win in women's singles was the crowning glory of the East Asian nation's successes in Glasgow, which included silver and bronze in women's doubles, as well as another bronze, courtesy of its men's doubles duo Takeshi Kamura and Keigo Sonoda. And with unprecedented titles from Rio 2016 and the Thomas Cup the year before, it is no surprise that Japan's head coach, Park Jubong, is regarded as a big factor in the country's fortunes in the sport. The Korean has been at the helm for over a decade, and he recalls a challenging start to his tenure. I've been overseeing the national team for the past 13 years, and when I first came to Japan, this national training center didn't exist. Before I joined the national team, their goal was to go to the Olympics by attending lower grade tournaments to chase ranking points. But then they might have had some ranking, but their skill level didn't quite match, so their ranking wasn't real. Japan wasn't short of badminton talent, but Park knew the national team setup needed restructuring if it was to harness its potential. On top of his agenda was to improve infrastructure and ignite self-belief in the players. This gymnasium was built as the National Training Center in December 2007. So since then, the players have trained here. For them to have a place to train whenever they need to is a great thing. Since I came to Japan, I have sent players to higher grade tournaments overseas to play against top-ranked players of the world. For each player to recognize where he or she stands in the world, and once they understand the gap between themselves and the top players of the world, they know how far they have to go to achieve it. The revolution has taken time, but it has been worth it. Japan's national badminton team now comprises a group of world-class shufflers hungry to get better all the time. So, I'm proud and I'm happy that in Japan, players are motivating and influencing each other to go higher and further. Patience, humility and fortitude have been key to their success. And these are the same values that would see the nation shape a lasting sporting legacy. The change I've made is that players go out to the world to play against top players, to see how much harder they need to work to get there, so that now the players understand well and set their goal one step at a time. Step by step. They might know that they can't become champions instantly, 
but in two years, for instance, make quarterfinals, and in four years, make semi-finals. So they prepare themselves, and that's how they all work towards their goals.